You're listening to Blockchain 2025. The future is right now. Every week, we explore implications of the technology underpinning cryptocurrencies. Blockchain. Each episode is a standalone examination of one industry broken into three segments. A basic overview, blockchain's disruptive impact, and relevant crypto projects. Blockchain 2025 is part of the Bitcoin.com podcast network. Learn about Bitcoin, create a wallet, and buy your first Satoshis all at Bitcoin.com. All right, another special format for Blockchain 2025. This is your host, Matt Aaron. And this is C. Edward Kelso from the News Desk out at news.bitcoin.com. That's right. Kelso is doing this for free. He's uh, an intern on the Blockchain 2025 podcast, <laughs> and you're doing great, man. You're doing great work. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's a lot of fun, man. I, I enjoy this. Yeah, man. In all seriousness, we were hiring some interns for the podcast team as well as the Spanish language team. And it, nice. it's pretty cool, man. We're a centralized slash decentralized company, decentralized in the sense that a lot of times you just do things yourself. So HR was like, yeah, here's how you do it. And I'm interviewing people. And well, I guess I do interview people for a living, but interviewing people for a job is a different beast. It sure is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, this is a special app because it's really about you, Kelso. As it should be. <laughs> As it should be. And where are you going next week, man? I'm going to trek up to L.A. I'm going to take the wife uh, who's going to be um, co-opted as a photographer. She's my plus one. And we're going to go to L.A. to the Dick Clark Theater. I've gotten some, I guess, credentials for a screening of the new Alex Winter documentary. It's called Trust Machine, the story of blockchain. Gotcha. And, you know, Alex Winter, right, he's done Deep Web. He's a serious filmmaker. Right. You can find them all over Netflix. Yeah. And it's it's trippy because if you're of a certain age, you see Alex Winter and you're like, man, I know that guy from somewhere. <laughs> and of course, he starred uh, famously opposite of Keanu Reeves in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And he was also in Lost Boys, which was a huge movie. So, uh, yeah, he's become quite the documentarian. Yeah. Interesting uh, how his career has has shifted. So listeners can have an idea. Right. This first episode is you know, Kelso's attitude pre, we'll say, Hollywood blockchain. I know Rosario Dawson is narrating it. And we're just going to look at the trailer and some of the hype around it and give our opinions. And then next week, we'll kind of have a review and talk to Kelso about what he learned. But Trust Machine, the story of blockchain, Isa, can you cue up the teaser so everyone can hear it? With the internet, we're not really the users. We're not really the customers. We're the product. But blockchain says it's another way. <laughs> another way. Blockchain? It's still an experiment in process. In Africa, now we think about money in a very different way. In this refugee camp, in this supermarket, all the transactions are authorized and recorded on a blockchain network. I believe in the power of blockchain. Open source technology like blockchain is exactly what hackers had envisioned from the beginning. Are you a hacker? Yeah, I describe myself as a hacker. Blockchain scared the shit out of some very powerful people. Blockchain is just a scam. A lot of this stuff is going to go away. It doesn't serve any useful function. A fraud! What we're trying to stop is simple. We're trying to stop the abuse of power. Well, you, as you hear, he's got a way of framing a documentary. To go back a little bit, downloaded his foray into our space, you know, tangentially. It was about kind of the Napster case, uh, the beginnings of P2P, uh, peer-to-peer torrent stuff. And then in 2015, he did Deep Web, which really examined and took on in, in sort of a loving fashion, which this has kind of got me over to Alex Winter and, and, and respecting his work, what happened with uh, Silk Road and Ross Ulbricht. So... He's kind of continuing along that line. Again, here, the natural extension is to blockchain. And I'm interested to see how this goes. I'm not, even though I you know, co-host the podcast Blockchain 2025, I'm not a blockchain is more important than Bitcoin sort of guy. I'm, I'm just not there. And I, I think that's kind of, from what I can see, that's sort of a, a winter's take here, at least according to the uh, trailer. Yeah, and it has a lot of the cheesy stuff that you can find on a lot of blockchain documentaries Yeah, on our podcast. I'm sure I've been that guy before, but it's like, you know, blockchain is changing everything and it has this potential, but it's, they seem to talk about it with inevitability. Again, 
I'm just basing this on the trailer, right? But I sure. do think that it's blockchain, not Bitcoin. It's short-sighted. It's a safer way to play and, and not be radical about it. And I'm into public blockchains, which are powered by a cryptocurrency, not private blockchains. I think the whole refugee thing is quite interesting, but you know, refugees on a blockchain, meaning like personal identity records, I know they're trying that right now with Syrian refugees, yeah. but it's important to note that that involves manual entry onto a blockchain. So we talked about that on the voting podcast. So right. manual entry into a distributed database, it could be good for records. Sure. That's your point of failure. And when I think of refugees, I think more of Venezuelan refugees. I mean, Kelso, yesterday's episode with Jose from Eat Bitcoin Cash, uh, Venezuela, and he just talked about how if you go to customs at the Caracas airport and you have money in your bag, they'll take your money. They'll take your right, iPod, right, gold, right. whatever you have. But, you know, cryptocurrency, you can, quote unquote, carry that to another country and they'll never know. And when it comes to refugees, the real revolution is cryptocurrency, not blockchain. Yep. But yeah, I mean, I think we got to give this guy a pretty long slack here, right? I mean, I think that he's proved himself before. And they did talk a little bit about the scammy part and, and BitConnect. So I'm just curious how he puts this whole thing together. Yeah, I, I had a chance to interview him, and we'll put that up on in the show notes if you want to check it out. It's a, it's a short kind of pre-interview, hoping to get to talk to him uh, face-to-face in L.A. No promises there. But again, comes from the perspective that, you know, Bitcoin's fine, but the sort of the idea is a little too speculative for him in, in the sense that a lot of the people in our space are focused on the price and they're focused on the venture capital and they're focused on the business. And, you know, I, I don't really know Winter's politics, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm totally going to guess here and say he's kind of your sort of typical, maybe radical progressive left of center guy, not Hillary, but maybe Bernie sort of guy. And so I think they find a lot of the, the money aspect, the economic aspect to be either distasteful or kind of vulgar or you know, proto-capitalist or go-go libertarian. And I don't think they, they, they want to touch that aspect. So what keeps it safe for them is to say things like blockchain and decentralization and so on. So I think that's where it's, it's going. And that's not to say there's no value there. Obviously, again, I do the podcast with you, so I, I definitely find uh, value there. But critically, he does say, you know, it's just a ledger. So that I was heartened by that. For sure. And it's also worth noting that this documentary will be on the blockchain Whatever that means exactly, right? Let's save that for next week. Uh-huh. But it would be ironic for a, uh, a documentary that talks about the hype, do something that sounds like very, very hypey, but I could be proved wrong. Maybe they have a great idea for content on the blockchain. And <laughs> yeah. I guess I am being a bit of a hypocrite because I do see like, uh, you know, memo.cash or we'll say a, a decentralized Twitter on a blockchain seems like it's useful with all the censorship going on. Right. But yeah, I mean, Kelso, I guess my question for you is, you got Joseph Lubin of Consensus. He's big in the Ethereum. He's like, you know, Consensus is huge. Like, I'm just curious, what type of people do you expect to see a lot of celebrities, musicians? Like, who's going to show up to this event? Yeah, I would say in LA, you're probably going to get the Imogene Heaps, the, uh, I don't, I'm not sure where Laura Shin's at, but you'll get a couple of minor celebrities, maybe Rosario Dawson, who's doing the VO, the voiceover. The narration for the film might be there. I don't know. I, you know, at, when 2017 was going and things are going through the roof, I think more celebrities were a little inclined in that direction. Uh, I think it's it's very much cooled off. It, it'll be interesting to see kind of who shows up. Uh, the press will definitely be there in droves, just because it's you know it's a free thing and we like free things. For sure. I wonder if there's gonna be some really goofy celebrities there. <laughs> That's on my list for you to report back to myself and the podcast. <laughs> for sure. You know, these are kind of the fun things. And what I was, uh, I try to explain to people when, as a journalist, sometimes you go down a road and it looks really, really promising. <laughs> and it turns out to be nothing there. Uh, and other times, it's just the craziest thing. Uh, I wrote a story a few weeks back, which I thought was a one off, you know, basically a rewrite of some of the Indian press that was happening at the time uh, regarding a scam and, and a guy who was arrested. And next thing you know, 150,000, 200,000 viral views later, it turned into this huge, huge thing. So you never quite know. I'm hoping he does seem, again, according to the trailer and some of the press I've read, to kind of delve into blockchain usages you know, away and apart from kind of the typical hacker aspect and into how it can be used for distribution for um, emerging markets. So I'm curious to see where where he goes with that. For sure. And let's get down to the logistics. Uh Driving or flying, Airbnb, hotel. How are you going to play this out? (laughs) We will drive and we will drive back because that's the kind of animal that I am. We have babies, so... 
Yeah. I asked Roger if I could use the Bitcoin.com helicopter, and he was fine with that, but you know how that goes. Uh, budget and so on. So I wasn't able to get the purchase order. I understand. <laughs> And the reason I mentioned Airbnb, man, is that I think we should uh, cover it. This season, I think there are some interesting startups in the, we'll call it the decentralized version of uh, Airbnb, decentralized home sharing. And this has happened with Uber, and it might be the nature of the beast. When things start out, they're always like cool and new. And Uber and Airbnb yeah. used to have that aspect about them. But I've noticed that with doing a lot of Airbnb lately also is that, you know, it's been overall good, but it's definitely more business and transactional now, the, the feeling of it than it was before, even if people are offering a good service. Uh-huh. So it made me think about things get really big and then they get pulled apart and the internet got big and it got centralized. And blockchain is this idea to kind of pull things back the other way, kind of decentralize things again, right? As you hear the buzzword, decentralize. And so I wonder about that. Just as a closing thought there, I think that the documentary is going to make that case that you know the internet's controlled by Google Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Uh And now the blockchain is going to decentralize that. But part of this battle, right? No revolutions. And when you're going against the banks, large governments, music industry and and film in this case, they go down swinging and there's going to be blood. And I don't say that to be dramatic. What I mean to say is I hope that the documentary does not paint the picture that blockchain's here and it's going to solve everything and it's inevitable. I feel like there's a lot of people that do not want blockchain to, to succeed. I, I think you're you're spot on with that observation. And what I'm finding for the most part is that these guys, when they embrace blockchain technology, they often do so without really understanding the tech. And I don't think Winter's one of those guys, at least from the little that I've read and interacted with him. Uh, he seems to kind of know his stuff. I think there's a place for its disruptive nature. But what I try to when people do ask my opinion on these things, since I work in the space, no one understands cryptocurrency. Now, we all have different expertises and we can you know, find niches and aspects of it where we have a little bit more knowledge, but no one understands, quite frankly, what we have. We're all kind of molding it and shaping it and pushing it in these different directions. So this could be a foundational film. He seems to be all over the place with regard to UNICEF and hacktivists and you know where things are going to go and how ledgers are going to be used. We'll see. We'll definitely see about that, as you say. For me, the killer app, what makes blockchain relevant at all is the cryptocurrency. And you know that definitely is not the vogue opinion right now uh, in terms of uh, Wall Street or institutional investors or people who they just kind of find Bitcoin to be icky. For sure. And I mean, I want to finish it up here. Like you mentioned the whole uncertainty aspect and I would take this podcast, you know, what we say on on all the podcasts, our guests included, that we're not giving advice. We're having, you know, it's discourse, right? So we're having these conversations where you may learn something or find other points that you on your own can research. And I want to bring it back to Peter Thiel because I'm a huge fan. And I think Kelso, I shared with everyone in the company, Thiel's interview on the, the Rubin Report and like the last 40 minutes in particular. And they asked him about uh, Thiel was a Trump supporter. And then Eric Weinstein, who works under him, yeah. is a Bernie supporter. And so Rubin posed the question. He says, you know, it's uncommon having a company where people have different opinions in, in a very <laughs> sensitive space and they're vocal about them. Uh-huh. But you guys are comfortable sharing these opinions, uh, freedom of thought, like a true freedom of thought. So one, I was like, okay, I think we should do that within Bitcoin.com. And I think that is happening. And then two is Peter's answer was brilliant. He says, I see my peers be very sure of their ideas, thinking that we have reached the the top of innovation in 2018. He's like, I think at his companies, they're less sure in all of their beliefs. So having conflicting views is healthy as you try to figure things out. And so I can't think of a better industry or field than blockchain and cryptocurrency to have, we'll say, weaker beliefs slash ideas as this whole thing plays out in a way that no one knows exactly how it will go. Yeah, and we get a lot of that from our CEO, Roger Veer, in the sense that I've never found him to be particularly dogmatic. So in other words, as hard as he fights for Bitcoin cash, what everybody ignores is his statements about a diversifying a portfolio. Or if, you know, if this doesn't work out, you know, he has a singular principle that he's kind of looking towards decentralized cash uh, money for the world, getting it out of the hands of politicians and governments. 
But it doesn't have to be Bitcoin Cash. And so you can kind of see it in his personal investment life. He's invested in everything from, you know, Ripple to Kraken to all these other different things that right now a lot of people would say, ooh, you know, that's terrible. Or maybe even he would kind of look askew at it. But the point is that you have to be open to these new ideas. Disputation, argument, um, sort of that collegial back and forth is kind of where you find the truth. And before we take off here, you had some really interesting things to say about Singular DTV, which is Lubin's group that's sort of responsible for this documentary, uh, Trust Machine. For sure. And we covered them on a previous episode of Blockchain 2025. I mean, I'll link to that in the show notes. But that uh, singer DTV, they had grammatic and the tokenization. You know, so that's a, a musician, artist, I should say. And now they're doing this blockchain documentary. Um, singer DTV is ambitious. They're creative. They're open. They're trying to do a lot of things. And it's definitely one of those, um, you know, tokenizing a musician, right? The uh, Kelso's band token, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, tokenizing this documentary, if that's <laughs> indeed what they're doing. It's interesting and it's untested. Water. So I definitely give anyone props for doing that, right? Like the just trying something new. And we'll have a little bit more follow up after you go next week. Yeah. But I think the TLDR is like, is Singer DTV trying to do too much? Yeah. Or are they onto something? Maybe they're like, hey, out of all these things in the entertainment industry, we don't know which one's going to work. So we're going to try 10 of them and then we're going to hit on one. It could be. So I'll be excited to see how that goes. But yeah, I mean, Kelso, please yeah. drive safe. I hope you wear something ridiculous, maybe like a. <laughs> A really bright suit, <laughs> fedora, perhaps, to the premiere. We'll be looking for that. Yes, yeah, so from my, my journalist fedora, yeah, with my cigar. Your journalist fedora with a cigar. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's that's the way to go there. <laughs> I just can't wait to meet R- Rosario Dawson. That's, that's really the whole point of this. It's just a complete bald, oh, man. naked, you know, subtext is for me to go up and meet Rosario Dawson. And our babies will be beautiful totally. and intelligent. Totally. I think uh, I think the finance department, when you asked for the helicopter, slide right through it. They're like, so it looks like uh, right. <laughs> cost, it looks like Kelso wants a helicopter to impress Rosario Dawson. I think that's what it came down yeah. to. Yeah. My decentralized helicopter. Decentralized helicopter. Oh, man. All right. Well, hey, let's leave it there. This is part one and check back next week for part two of Kelso's visit to Hollywood to see the premiere of the documentary Trust Machine. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Bitcoin.com podcast network. To learn more about our shows, visit Bitcoin.com forward slash podcast. Bitcoin.com podcast network. This is Sterling Lujan, ambassador for Bitcoin.com. Make sure to listen to the Humans of Bitcoin podcast Stories from people around the world whose lives have been changed by Bitcoin. New episodes every Tuesday.